Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Steve Rowell here. Today is Tuesday, March the 19th, 2019. It is 8 a.m. in New York, 5 a.m. in Los Angeles, 12 noon in London. Sydney, Australia is around 11 p.m. But wherever you are in the world, thank you for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And this may actually be a little bit of a shorter show than normal, but it's one you're definitely not going to miss uh, or not going to want to miss because uh, Steve had some uh, news over the weekend that we'd been kind of anticipating, but it it came, it arrived, and it kind of caught you a little bit by surprise, didn't it, my friend? It did indeed. <laughs> yeah, we um, the the article with the Church of England was well, I was told that it had been pulled again, right? Um, due to the awful things that have been going on in. New Zealand, right. um, but then I, I actually had a—I think I had a text about one a.m. one a.m. on Sunday morning, mm-hmm. <laughs> telling me that it that it was actually going into the uh, into the paper wow. and um, and online. So yeah, it's it's all been published now. I've obviously shared that on Facebook, and the response I've had to that has been phenomenal. It's been awesome, such a positive response to it, and um, and it looks like I may be getting some TV appearances. Wow! On the back of that as well. That's that's um, that's the, the the way it's going. So I've got a meeting. Hence why this this is going to be a short podcast today because I've got got a meeting at half past twelve, um, right. which is in twenty five minutes with yeah. um, with some people from the TV channel to uh, discuss what we can and can't do. So yeah, that, that's going to be interesting as well. So it's the um, the vision, the intention that I set has all come to pass again. So. The law of attraction works, guys. There it's really it's happened. <laughs> it, it works, and, and and what you you're discovering is that it works in in surprising ways because you found yourself. You were telling me before with the podcast, you found yourself bringing up emotions you hadn't experienced in in years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of those were negative, um, but the main one for me, um, the last two days, I've spent the majority of the last day, well day and a half, um, in tears. Mm. But not tears of pain. It's mm-hmm. been tears of, of joy. Um, because it, in the article, actually, I had to pull out. They asked me to pull out some pictures of me when I was when I was younger. Yeah. Um, one was before before the abuse started, and one was whilst the abuse was taking place. And I looked at both those pictures, and the one where the abuse was taking place, the the, the little boy in that picture, which was me, um, the the smile was. It wasn't a real smile; it was a false smile, and mm. my nostrils were flared. It's the anger in my eyes, and I was just closed off, and, and it wasn't it wasn't a happy person, right? Um, which is what I remember, mm-hmm. and which is where where that always used to take me back to. Sure. But then I looked at the picture of me when I was nine, ten years old, which was before the abuse started happening. And I'll probably cry now because oh, <laughs> this is why right. every, every, every time I think about this, I get these happy tears. Yeah. But there was this little boy that had a a big smile on his face and a glint of happiness in his eyes because nothing was happening then. Mm. And I'd forgotten, I'd forgotten that that little boy ever felt like that and never existed. Right. In my in my reality, that that had gone. I hadn't even thought about him for that long. Yeah, I probably last saw that picture when well when I was eleven, right? Um, when it was taken, um, or ten or whatever it was, and seeing that brought up all these emotions, and I can now connect back to that happiness that I had when I was a child. That's just uh, sorry, I'm getting emotional again. But every every time I can do that now, this is what I've been like for the last two days. It's been brilliant because I can. I could literally go back and grab that that feeling of, of pure happiness that I haven't felt for so long and pull it into my reality now and use it. That's and that's fantastic. such a powerful thing to have. Oh yeah, that's it's wonderful. So I mean you yeah. made you made a reconnection so that, that uh, many people are unable to make, which shows just how far you've come with your own um development, your own um growing out of that horrific experience you went through and, and you've, you've moved past it so sufficiently that you pulled up stuff that was gone. That's great. That's amazing. It's, 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 it feels great. It feels fantastic because 
I can use that in everything in my in everything I do now. And I know 100%. If I'm when I try to manifest things moving forward now, if I use that energy from that little boy before all that stuff started happening, mm-hmm. that's going to be powerful. I mm-hmm. feel it. Now. I feel the energy in me when, I, when I'm talking about it. It's just awesome. It's uh, it's pure joy. Mm-hmm. And that's where you need, that's the place I can be in now, and I can use that for manifesting and, and moving forward with the law of attraction stuff. It's such an, it's such a, that I just know my things are just going to start popping up whenever I want them to now. I just, I've just got that belief that, that I've got that power now. I've got that inside me and I can use it to, to do awesome things. And, and I've started already. Oh, that's <laughs> exciting. That's very I'm exciting. Yeah. To have that, boy, when that confidence comes and that what you're describing is, is a supreme level of confidence. When that confidence yeah. comes, boy, does that feel good. I mean, that there's nothing that feels better than that because you know everything's starting to work out the way you want it to and it's going to and it's inevitable. That's the best part about it. When you're that confident, it feels inevitable. It does. And that's where you need to be. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the end goal. That's, that's where you want to be. Absolutely. In a position where you 100% feel and believe that you're already, you're already where you want to be. Yeah. You're already grateful for what you've got that's just around the corner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. People, uh, people are uh, streaming in. They're streaming in and listening to us live stream here. Uh, and Nasha sent off a message. She, said, she says, uh, congratulations, Steve, for being so brave and for speaking up. More love and power to you. Uh, read the news a bit. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Nasha. Yeah. And, and what I remember... But this is the sort of thing. Yeah, this is a sort of, the sort of support that I've been getting from doing what I've done. And it's it, it, it does it blows you away. It's such a, a a nice thing to 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 hear and have all that support behind you when you when you're pushing forward with these things. And I know 100 percent because of the energy that's behind this, it's just going to keep it's going to keep going and it's going to keep getting bigger and better. And it's going to have the outcomes that I want, which is helping those those other people that, that, that have had these experiences get number one closure, but also be, be able to rebuild their lives as well. That's, right. That's, that's the end game. That's the goal. Yeah. Absolutely. I remember too, over the weekend, yeah. normally I'm not on Facebook. I mean, I'll be on, you know, once or twice a day or something like that. Check to see yeah. if I get any messages, that, that sort of thing. But most of the time I'm not on Facebook for whatever reason. I went on Facebook over the weekend within about three minutes after you posted that newspaper article. (laughs) And I didn't see the time. I didn't see how close the time was. So I saw the newspaper article. I saw that you'd written about it. And I didn't see any comments. I said, where is everybody? And then I finally looked. Oh, oh, it's only been up three minutes. Oh, okay. (laughs) Well, I said, it was funny because I I said to Gemma, you, you, you were the first one to comment. And I thought... Look at that, Walt's, Walt's been sat there waiting for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get spiritually, in a sense, I think I, I probably was because I mean, why did I pick that particular time to connect in? You know, what I did, and and if, if you'd asked me at the time, I couldn't have told you why, but that's just what I did. <laughs> so I have to ask you. I mean, it's a little bit early, but have there been any Me Too's since that came out? Any what, sir? Me Too's people saying, yeah, that happened to me too. One person has um, mentioned it. Mm-hmm. Um, I've reached out to them. Nothing's come back yet, but yeah. that's in the people who things in their own time, which is fine. Yeah. Um, but no, not not as not directly to because my solicitor that, that dealt with my uh, my case put um, a comment in the newspaper as well. So I, I'd expect them to go through to him uh, as, yes. as first point of call. Right. Um, I spoke to him this morning. He's. 100% under the belief that there will be more people that do come forward. Because mm-hmm. um, the last time we put it in the newspaper and on TV, because it's been on TV before, but not as me. I was anonymous then. Right. Um, I didn't go on as, as, as Steve. I went on as um, that person. Right. Or blacked out and different voice and everything. Right. Um, but when we did it, when we did it that way, we got another two or three people coming forward. So. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping now because I, I've actually done it as myself, it'll be even more more powerful and more energy behind it. Then it'll um, it'll prompt more people to to, uh, to come forward. Yeah, that that's a good thing too. Um, I, as I think about this, I, I'm I'm comparing it, of course, to what the Catholic Church has gone through and uh, 
also similarly, uh, the Southern Baptists here in America are now starting to go through it. Um, I think there was a thing with uh, some branches of Orthodox Judaism were going through similar kinds of things. And uh, each time that I read about it, and I'm sure this is true for many people, each time I read about this stuff, I, I, my mind boggles at, wow, how far is this spreading? Like, how much of this was actually going on? And I don't know if we'll ever find out, but it just it, it just seems to be the wave that never stops rolling. And and I mean, yeah. you get that sense, too. I, I, I mean, you're closer to it than I am. So I, I would think you'd have a, a better sense of it. Um, I don't think you're ever going to stop it because you're always going to get those type of people that are going to gravitate towards those sort of, um, you know, power roles so they can mm. they can do that sort of thing. But um, I know that, the, I, I mean, from my point of view, the, the Church of England have been great in this in, in this sense because Good. they did beat to me. They agreed that they need to do more. They've then put out a message asking for more people to come forward. They've mm. now got safeguarding things in place. They've got a team in place where people can call in and speak to them. They will be listened to and they will take them down the right right road. So the Church of England, they are doing things to make it better. They're not doing enough yet. Um, but that's what I'm obviously trying to change and, and make right. better. And rather than work against them and call them bad names and because it's no. not everybody in that organization it's right the same. It's, it's certain people right. that are the bad ones that are doing this um it's about working with them to make it so difficult for people to do this moving forward that it, we, we get it down to the minimum you know that it can be and also have the support system in place for people to um to to pull on when they need it if it has happened to them you know in the past and, and since we're talking about people coming forward, uh, presumably there are going to be people who listen to this podcast or watch this video who may have also been victims themselves. If that's the case, where do they go? If they if they want to reach out, how do they reach out? Tell people about that. Um, well, first point of call, I mean, you can, people, if they want to, can contact me and I can talk them through my experience, um, which may help them. I might be able to direct them in, in, you know, in the right way for, for the stage of, um, the stage that they're currently at. Mm -hmm. Everybody's different. It depends what happened, when, how, and why, and right. where, where they've got to with it personally already. So, but if, if anyone wants to have a talk about it, they can drop me a message. I'm quite happy to do that. I'm not going to charge anybody any money for doing that. It's because it's something I'm passionate about helping people with. Right. So if they want to do that, they can. Um, I'm not sure in the U S where they go, uh, but in the UK, you can contact my my firm of solicitors that work for me at Brilliant because they specialise just in that that particular area. Really, really. So, um, you drop me a line, I can give you their details, and you can contact them, and they'll help you through the process. Alternatively, contact the church if if you, if you've been um, subject to this sort of thing through a religious organisation. Contact them and tell them, send them an email, and they do respond because that's what I did. But it's about not giving up. It's about pushing forward and getting what you deserve. That's that's the main thing. I know it's difficult. It wasn't that easy for me, but I made the decision not to stop until I got what I needed. And I think if you do that and tell them that's what you're doing, then they don't have a choice but to act. And, and what should somebody who is coming forward, what should they expect for themselves internally? What, what, what should they expect is going to happen? Is it going to just bring up all this pain and they're going to have to live in all this pain? Um, for me, yes, it did. It, because I had to go through explaining what happened again. But when I look back now, that's never going to be as bad as what actually happened. So, yeah, I had to explain, I had to say what happened, I had to go through the whole process of reliving that. Um, but the end result was the fact that now I'm a stronger person and it gives you back your power is such so you feel empowered because now you're in control of what happens. You're in control of what happens moving forward with your life and nobody else is. Whereas before you've given the control away to what happened to you. I mean, I always lived as a victim. I was just what happened to me. I wasn't Steve. That was what happened to me. Mm -hmm. um, but now I'm Steve and I can go do what, what the hell I like. I can mm -hmm. do anything I want in this world. Nobody can stop me doing that. 
it's up to me and I'm in control of it all, which is a great place to be. But yeah, get, just get some help, get some, um, some mindset work, go speak to a counsellor. There's all sorts of different resources out there that you can get. Um, even, I think even the church now will pay for you to go for counselling and pay for therapy if you need that. So mm-hmm. there are organisations out there. So I work, I'm part of the uh, Survivors Trust char- charity, or at least I will be soon once everything gets the, the, I's dotted and the T's crossed. Right. Um, there are organisations out there like the Survivors Trust. If you don't feel comfortable contacting the church initially, contact the Survivors Trust, contact me, um, and we'll we'll point you in the right direction. There is support out there. I didn't think there was when I first started this process, but once I started the process, I found all the support I needed. Mm. So don't ever think you're alone. There are people out there that have been through the same as you, and they're the ones that can support you through it because we know what we're doing because we've been there. Yeah, that makes a difference. When when you say that uh, you're stronger now, do you mean that you're stronger because you went through the process of reaching out and and reliving it again? That that actually that process is what made you stronger. I think a bit of both, yeah, um, mm-hmm. because it allows you then to to realize that actually what happened has made me who I am now, but not in a negative way because I can pull positives from all those situations that, that I was in. So for me, as a, an 11-year-old boy, being able to stand in front of a room full of 300 people after I'd just been abused five minutes beforehand in a room with the man that had done it in front mm. of all those people and conduct a wedding ceremony with a big smile on my face. I'm a very resilient little individual, aren't I? Yeah. So I, I, I can pull those positives from it and use those in my current reality and world now to help me through situations now. I don't need to focus on the actual what happened because that's no longer important because I can't change it. It's done. There's no, nothing I can do to, to change what happened. I don't need to be angry anymore because all that's doing is keeping me in a place where he's won because I'm still angry with him. So I've let go of the anger and now I'm just, I'm just using the positives and using the positives all of the time. Like, with uh, the picture of me before it started happening, I can pull back from that now. I can pull, I can go even further back past the abuse to before it and pull all the happiness that I had before it started happening. And that's the place I'm in now. And that's because of that article, because it's taken me back there again and taken me through some things I didn't work on. There must and be. I, that's what I've been doing over the past, past few days. I've, I've been working through that with my coach and various other people to, uh, to work out what it all means. Right. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we know just from, you know, in general about being LOA practitioners that whenever we can release anger or any kind of negative emotion, um, it, it means that we can attract more of what we want and so forth. And it also feels better. But I mean, something like this is it, this was mammothly painful. This, this was painful on, 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 you know, 12 on a scale of 10, that kind of thing. And I would imagine that when you're able to release that, which which you can do when you get the help. That must be a tremendous weight off your shoulders. That just must, that, that, that has to be just a powerful feeling of, oh, thank God, I no longer have to carry that stuff anymore. And you know, the, the, the only way to release it is by telling somebody about it. Because you don't have to keep it in, in here anymore. Mm-hmm. You, I'm getting emotional again. You can, <laughs> you, can, you can give it to somebody else. You can get rid of it. Mm-hmm. You can throw it away. Yeah. You can get rid of that anger. You can go smash something. I used to, one of my things I used to do, I used to smash, um, Glass bottles. In oh, a really? Bin, and I used to throw them in the bin. That was one of the things to get rid of my anger, one of my therapists that I used to do, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, there's all sorts of different things that these people can give you that just, oh, they're, they're awesome because you can, you can use, you can get rid of all the stuff that you don't need. And eventually, once you've started using all these different methods of removing negative emotions and getting rid of the anger and all these other different things, suddenly you, you, you're free from it because you've been practicing it over and over again. And it's, it's, I'm never, never completely free from it. It still comes back every now and then, but now I've got the coping mechanisms to, to tell it to go away pretty quickly rather than sit with it for, for weeks on end like I used to do. Right, right. Well, I know we're only a few minutes away from when you have to leave us to go do some national yeah. television, which is pretty exciting stuff all by itself. Um, but <laughs> uh, let's make this the last question to ask. What What is 
your ultimate dream from this whole experience? So, you know, what's what's the ultimate possible goal that you could possibly achieve that would just make you feel like you'd, in American terms, that you'd hit a home run, that, that this was just the best thing that could have happened? What, what's the best thing that comes out of this? Um, well, ideally, I, I, I'm wanting to be the spokesperson for historical abuse for the, the, the Survivors Trust charity and go and speak to not just the church, but other organisations on how it affects victims and survivors. A victim and a survivor are two different things. Um, if you're in the victim state, it's, it's a very different mentality to where I am now. Um, so what the end game is to offer, I, I want to be offering workshops, free workshops to victims to get them from a victim state to a survivor state to then being free of it or com- completely like I am. So that's, that's the end game. I want it to have enough money in the bank from a charity point of view to be able to offer these, th- these services everything they need to get themselves to where they want to be. Back to happiness, if you like, mm. in, a, in a workshop that doesn't cost them anything that they can just come along to and people that have already gone through it, like me. And obviously I know other people that have as well. Um, and we can we can help you get there by just sharing our journeys and, and the way that we've done it. Sorry, I'm crying again because <laughs> it's really important to me. Um, but yeah, it's all happening and it will happen because you know everything I do always happens. It really you you are one of the most amazing manifestors <laughs> I've ever met. So I don't have a faintest doubt in the world that's going to happen. But uh, <laughs> it's going to be fun to be having. We kind of have a, a ringside seat here because every week, uh, twice a week, yeah. you and I are doing shows together. So we're going to find out, I'm sure, on Thursday and then next Tuesday, you know, more about what comes out of this and it, it's yeah, going to be fun yeah, we'll you, you, you updated, but we'll uh we'll get i think we'll we're gonna to have to start doing more stuff directly based on LOA, aren't we because it's all a bit about me <laughs> i know it's always uncomfortable to talk about yourself isn't it that's what i always found that's that, that's why i have co-hosts because that way i can spread things off to the co-hosts and let them talk about themselves for a bit <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No worries. But anyway, I'm going to I'm going to shoot off. But thanks very much. It's been a, it's been a pleasure sharing this with everybody on LOA today, and, and thank you all for your support. It's been it's been great. And uh, yeah, I'll keep you updated because this is going to go. Yeah, it's yeah. going to go over listening. I'm sure it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, good luck with uh, this this particular broadcast. I know you got other broadcasts coming up even beyond this, but uh, try to have fun with it too. Because hey, you're you're you're, yeah, well, you're achieving your goal. This is great. Yeah, this is really good. More and more people are going to be helped. That's the best thing that can happen. Fantastic. Time to celebrate. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll be talking. <laughs> I'll be talking to you later, Steve. You take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. And uh, just a reminder to our listeners: I, I, I'm willing to stay on to you know, talk about topics. If you have particular topics you want to discuss, I'll be glad to do that. Um, otherwise, we'll make it a relatively short episode compared to normal. Um, but I do want to remind people that you know, w- first of all. You want to be a subscriber. This is this is the kind of thing that you get when you're a subscriber. You get some really amazing and, and interesting, fascinating, and yeah, sometimes painful things, but a lot of uh, releaseful things too um, by listening to all the way today. So become a subscriber if you're not yet a subscriber. The instructions on how to do that are pretty simple. You just go to the homepage of our website at LOAToday.net, and we have it programmed now so that it will actually detect what kind of device you're using and give you the right uh, link to click right off the bat. You don't even have to go search for it. It just shows you the right one for your device. And then you just click it and follow the steps, and it will guide you through the process of subscribing to get the podcast coming to your smartphone every single time that we put out an episode. So it really couldn't be a whole lot easier. And then after you have subscribed, uh, you'll be sure to share the fact. This is one episode in particular I would really love to have everybody share Um, the fact that they're listening to it, because there are many, many uh, survivors of sexual abuse out there. Um, And there are many, many more victims who have not yet become survivors. And and like Steve was talking about, they're different things. We're We're defining them this way. A victim is somebody who still feels the shame and is hiding it and can't get it out. A survivor is one who has worked through the steps, gotten the help, um, been able to get uh, the pain out, get the the memory you know tossed out, so to speak, so that it doesn't haunt them anymore. And now they're truly surviving and thriving. Uh, we want to get this message out into the hands of as many victims as we can to help them become survivors. So uh, please do share this episode with as many people as you can, because this is probably one of the most important ones that you could share. 
Um, thank you to our live stream listeners. I, and I see Christopher with his hands together. Thank you very much for that, Christopher. And thanks, Nasha, for also for her comment as well. Um, if I, I, I'm not seeing any other questions. So we're going to kind of make this a short episode this time. Um, one thing I do want to tell people about on an entirely different topic, uh, progress is being made with the fiction podcast that Alex and I have started called The Grass is Greener. In fact, uh, I had the experience of, of writing the first few pages of the, the first episode's script. And um, Now, my sister is a a playwright and a script writer, and so I, obviously I leaned heavily on her, like, tell me, you know, how do you go about doing this? How do you format it? How do you, you know, lay it out so that uh, people who are reading the script and using the script can uh, make the most sense out of it? And she gave me a good education on it. But uh, it, it's an amazing thing. I'll, I'll just leave you with one thought. I spent four hours script writing yesterday and got six minutes worth of, of script writing done. So I have script six minutes worth of the first episode written in four hours. That'll give you a pretty good idea of how difficult it is to write scripts. It is very, very time consuming. But I can also tell you that uh, now I am biased. I'm the one who's writing this particular episode. But this is going to be a good episode. This is going to be an episode that's going to tear at your heartstrings um, because of, and, and anyone who's been following the conversations that Alex and Tom Wells and I have had about the script, uh, you, you have some idea of where this first episode is going. But uh, as, as I'm writing it out, I'm thinking, oh my God, I mean, this is just going to leave people, some people in tears, um, but it's, it's going to be very powerful. So just wanted to let you know that progress is being made there. I'm hoping to get the script done sometime by the end of this week, if I can, if I have enough hours to put in on it. And then once it's done, we're also going to start casting. And, hey, the goal is to, to actually have our first episode come out in April. And then we have our work really cut out for us if we're trying to do an episode a week because there's a lot of work that goes into it. But it should be fun. So another reason to become a subscriber. Um, again, if you haven't become a subscriber, do that uh, right now. Just go to the homepage, LOAToday.net. It guides you right through it step by step. And... I think we'll just draw it to a close right there. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening in. Thank you for sharing uh, your thoughts with Steve and, your, and uh, your messages of support. I know he appreciates it. I appreciate it as well. And we'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.